Hello neighbor, I'm Robert Burns and it is such a delight to be back with you and I'm going to be very brief in this introduction. I'll let you know this will be a two-part series but one thing is very critical and so we're going to break away immediately for you to see the following unfortunate incident. It's a four-minute video of an unfortunate incident wherein a former Louisiana State Trooper, figure, uh, Philip Tagliarino, unfortunately uh, had to take the life of an alleged drunk driver. So we're going to uh, break away for just four minutes to let you see that video. We'll be right back. Three miles north of Marksville, the mile post. Texas 5, November, Sierra Tango 47. 5 NS T47. Chevrolet pickup. Uh, I my word, it pulled over, but he's accelerating on the shoulder. Driving very slow. Staggering. Can you step back here, please? Step behind your vehicle, please. Come on back here. Get back here, buddy. Come on back here, buddy. Let's talk. 68 Troop. Tell that back up here. Uh, 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 get back over here. Come back here, buddy. Get your hands where I can see them. Get your hands where I can see them. Get down on the ground, buddy. Get down on the ground where I can see. Put your hands where I can see them. Above your head. Put your hands above your head. Sir, put your hands above your head. Put your hands. Hey, buddy, let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Get down on the ground. Get out on the ground! Troop, roll me an ambulance. Shots fired. Let me see your hands. Give me some backup over here, Troop. Troop, go ahead and roll me a Katie. It's 10 18. Let me see your hands. All right, now, as you would know, that is a very unfortunate situation. Uh, and as you saw on the dash cam video, it transpired on March the 24th of 2004. And approximately 11 days later, uh, Miss Darlene Jacobs Levy, who is an appointee of Governor John Bell Edwards to the Louisiana Auctioneer Licensing Board, 
uh, she uh, represented the uh, widow of Mr. Arway in filing a wrongful death suit against the trooper in question, uh, Philip Tagliarino. Uh, now let me just say this, uh, shortly thereafter uh, his widow had to file bankruptcy uh, and then uh, the bankruptcy trustee went ahead and retained Miss Jacobs uh, at the original uh, co contract that had been agreed to in the wrongful death settlement. And my point in all that is that if she's so worried, so caring about this family, I mean, we're going to give you a link for the order, uh, you know, for her employment. It called for one third, assuming no lawsuit had to be filed. Well, that was a moot point because of the point that uh, the bankruptcy trustee retained her. She'd already filed a lawsuit. Like I said, it only took 11 days for her to file that lawsuit. Uh, if it was not settled before trial and had to go to trial, the percentage she got, Miss Jacobs, Jacobs Levy, increased to 40%. We're going to give you a link for the document. If for any reason there needed to be an appeal, it jumps to 45%. Uh, so let me just say this. This thing dragged on for 13 years, okay? This, this incident happened in 2004. On June the 12th of 2017, this year, the matter finally came up for trial in Judge Wilson Fields' courtroom. Uh, and I noticed an advocate ad, I'm sorry, a story that ran on the very day that the trial was to commence. And as many of you may know, uh, I have a tendency to make some comments uh, when these advocate articles run. And I'm going to actually, this is a hard copy printout of the comments. I'm not going to provide a link to it because we're going to, I'm going to read them to you and you're going to get the relevant points. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you why I'm reading them in just one moment. But uh, there was an advocate article that, did not, that basically uh, the defense for Louisiana State Police would be that this was suicide by cop. And I think as you saw that video, uh, you would have to say you come out of a vehicle making a motion uh, like you're going to take the life of an officer. Uh, I think that's pretty compelling evidence that what we're dealing with here is suicide by cop. But at any rate, I had not seen that video at the point that I made uh, these comments. I'll get that out of the way. I started attending the trial once I knew jury selection would have commenced. Uh, but here's the comments that I made. Unfricking believable. No wonder it's so difficult to recruit police officers. First, they have to deal with a drunk like this who is endangering society as a whole and most certainly a major danger to the officer in particular. As for Darlene Jacobs, attorney for the plaintiff, her credibility is shot, and I used all caps, her credibility is shot. Just watch her lie through her teeth about her close friend, Larry S. Bankston, who was convicted in a very, very high profile trial in her own backyard of New Orleans in federal court. And then there's a direct link. We're gonna break away. It's only about a 45 second clip or so. We're gonna break away and let you see this woman lying through her teeth about Larry Bankston. Let's break away. No, 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 I just have a discussion. Larry Bankston, is an excellent attorney. I think we're, we are very lucky to have him. Um, he's got quite a few credentials, and I'm honored to think that he's going to be able to represent the board. You need someone that's experienced in these matters. He's very experienced. If I've been practicing for 42 years. He and his firm are well known, and I, I strongly recommend that we get someone of his caliber. Any discussion, Mr. Lamar? Yes, I have some reservations. That comes with a lot of baggage, too. <laughs> Is that not true, Ms. Dirk? No, I don't think it does come with a lot of baggage. I don't know any baggage for Mr. Banks in the legal community. He's never, he's never been censored by a court that I know of. And as I said, I've been practicing for 42 years, so if you had that, I wouldn't know about it. All right, I think by any objective assessment, you would have to say she gave some, not only did she give some very glowing reviews of Larry Bankston, literally like he was the greatest thing since sliced bread, but she took it a step further and said, never been censored by any court that I'm aware of, and I've been practicing for 43 years. Yet, 
You've seen the past post I've given on Larry Bankston. All of our viewers know full well this man was convicted. His license was revoked by the Supreme Court. I don't know what her definition of not being censored by any court would be. All right, let's continue on with the comments that I told you about. Jacobs also sent an email to her state senator, Senator J.P. Morrell, asking him not to confirm Reverend Freddie Lee Phillips, Louisiana's first and only African auctioneer in Louisiana's history to the Louisiana Auctioneer Licensing Board. And then we gave a direct link. I always provide the documentation when I make statements. We gave the direct link to that email, and we're going to put it in this feature post. We're going to put it in this feature post, but I'm also going to put it in front of the camera. This is Miss Darlene Jacobs's email, sent on April the 26th, 2016, six days after Governor John Bell Edwards had appointed him to the Auctioneer Licensing Board. Now, I'll just read it, and you'll see the highlighted part, okay? You'll see the highlighted part down here. Dear Senator, this is April 26th, and by the way, Senator Morrell didn't know how to handle this. They just set up at the spot, respond, his assistant did. Now, Senator Morrell, in my opinion, very wisely chose not to respond. But here's what she says. This is April 25th, 2016, sent at 4.49 p.m. Dear Senator Morrell, you will shortly be asked to confirm the governor's appointment of Mr. Freddie Phillips to the Louisiana Auctioneers Board. I would respectfully ask that you not confirm this appointment. As an auctioneer who has previously served on the board, she held the position that Freddie wound up attending. She didn't even bother with reapplying. I can tell you that Freddie Phillips insults the members at the board meetings and brings nothing but disdain to the auctioneer's board. He and his friend, Robert Burns, that would be me, folks, a former auctioneer, have accused the board of illegal practices and payroll fraud. I'm going to resume my comments. You just heard, you just saw the email that she sent, obtained through a public records request. I'm very thankful for Senator Morrell's office for providing it. They were legally required to. I'm sure she was hoping we would never, that we would never see that email, particularly Freddie. But at any rate, in the next paragraph of my comments, I said, Jacobs's email, available at the preceding link and dated April 26, 2016, states that Phillips and his friend, me, have, quote, stated that the board committed illegal acts to include payroll fraud. Apparently, Miss Jacobs cannot read, and I put them in all caps, a report issued by the Inspector General on December 9th, 2013. Now, bear in mind, she sent that email uh, April 26, 2016. She cannot read an inspection report by the Inspector General of, of December 9th, 2013, indicating that the board did, in fact, permit Sandy Edmonds to engage in payroll falling. When I provided the readers that advocate article, a direct link to the Inspector General's report, and we'll give you that direct link as well. Next paragraph of my comments. Of course, as we all know by now, Governor Honor Code, unquote, took that burden of having to confirm Phillips off of the Senate's back by simply firing him only 15 days after he'd named him to the board, a development which did not go over well with Phillips. In fact, most of you will know it didn't go over well because Reverend Phillips specifically told me he wanted me to bring my camera to the Baton Rouge Press Club, which was four days, four days after Governor Edwards had terminated his services, and he wanted me to videotape it. I'm going to be blunt with you. I didn't think Freddie Phillips was going to have guts enough to go up and confront a sitting governor. And this is what Freddie told me. He said, Robert, this man puts his pants on in the morning the same way I do. Bring that camera. And I mean the second the press club meeting concluded, he instructed me to follow him up there, and I videotaped him. I know you've seen it aboard, but we're going to break away just to give you a few quick little highlights because one thing is very important. You'll hear Reverend Phillips say, Miss Jacobs didn't have a problem with him being on the board. That's what he thought to be the case at that time, okay? Let's break away, just gonna give you some highlights and listen to Reverend Phillips telling Governor Edwards, Ms. Jacobs didn't have a problem with it. I accidentally appointed too many people that I committed to too many people. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm Reverend Freddie Phillips. I'm the one that you know, sent the order on. You have a problem with that, and then you send the order. 
the, the importance. That was to me somewhat dis disheartening. Oh, and, I understand. And, you know, and we made a mistake, and, and I apologize. We committed to, to more people uh, than we should have, and, and I had to rescind one, and I rescinded yours. Well, Miss Jacobs, you know, she was the one, and she didn't have any knowledge of it. And I told Miss Paul Matilda the same thing. I said, look, if the governor doesn't want integrity in his office and in, on his commissions, as it relates to the things that pertain to my industry, the auctioneer's industry, I uncovered the payroll fraud, the eyes here stuff, all the things that went on that was an embarrassment to not only our state, but my profession. And, you know, Miss Jacobs, I have a work relationship, she didn't have a problem. But, you know, she was not, and she informed me of this, that she was not even aware that she was still on the board, and she didn't have a problem with that. Now, I will tell you that one of the key reasons that Freddie would go up to Governor Edwards and say uh, that Miss Jacobs didn't have a problem with it is because I contacted her literally the next day after Reverend Phillips was dismissed by the board. I contacted her and I made it clear I was calling her in an official capacity as a reporter for Sound Off Louisiana and I recorded the phone call. We're going to give you a link to listen in on the phone call between myself and Miss Jacobs and you'll see that's why Reverend Phillips thought she didn't have a problem with it. Just listen to what she says, okay? Of course, she's not got any clue that we're going to find out about the email she fired off only 10 days before, okay? You know, saying she's got a huge problem and is insisting that her senator, and by the way, it wasn't just her. She recruited a whole bunch of other folks, Barbara Bonnet, Jessica, Jessica Casson. Uh, I mean, I can, the list goes on. You can, I'll give you a full link of all the emails that Senator Morrell got. He gave them all to us to his credit, but these people are not even constituents of his. Okay? They're not even constituents of his. And yet, Miss Jacobs went out there and recruited these folk to send. Apparently, J.P. Morrell will have a big say in the confirmation. Uh, but like I said, Honor Code took that burden off of his and every other senator's back by just firing him. Okay? Uh, so let me just say this. Let me continue on. Most of you who know me and know me well know I like to attend trials. So once I found out that this particular trial was taking place, I opted to attend it, all right? And uh, <clears throat> on Thursday, June the 15th, this would be the fourth day of the trial, uh, you know, I showed up in the afternoon. Nobody was there except the attorneys, okay? Uh, and the courtroom was empty. And so I took a seat. I didn't know what the situation was. I didn't know whether they were on a break or... Or, or just what was going on. I, did, I, I would find out later that Judge Fields, who was the judge overseeing this case, uh, that he had dismissed the, the jury for the remainder of that day. And Miss Jacobs and the defense attorney for state police, Andrew Blanchfield, and I will say he did a tremendous job uh, on, on what is obviously a delicate situation. I mean, you have the family of this deceased gentleman, Mr. Arway, in the courtroom. And so you have to kind of strike a balance. And he, did, he did a superb job, but he did the job he needed to do for the state people of the state of Louisiana. They were writing, the, they were trying to go back and forth about jury instructions. Well, Miss Jacobs Levy happened to notice me. She turned her neck around at one point. I'm sitting on, you know, the benches within the courtroom, and it's nobody but me in there as the audience at that point, because unbeknownst to me, I didn't know that proceedings were not going to take place the rest of the day. Uh, and Miss Jacobs Levy noticed me, and she turned and she looked at me, and I mean, she was furious. Let me tell you something. This woman was steaming mad about the comments that I had uh, supplied in the paper that I just read to you. Uh, and uh, let's just say this. Very, very few people read the article, so not many people were going to see the comments. But think about some of the people who would see the comments. People are going to follow this trial. How about the, now the jury's not supposed to. They follow the judge's instructions. They certainly won't see these comments. I think that's a good thing for Ms. Jacobs, obviously. That's probably why you have those protections in place. But be that as it may, you can rest assured the family saw them. And what do you think of, they thought of the attorney they've, they've just now learned about through these comments? It's probably not real good, is it? What do you think the bankruptcy trustee over in Texas who gave the authorization for this trial to proceed and finds out that Ms. Jacobs has sent this kind of an email, okay? And that she has flat out lied about Larry Banks. And videos don't lie, folks. The woman stood right there and she lied, okay? 
And so Miss Jacobs, like I said, was steaming mad about the comments that I had made. And she turned around when she noticed I was there and she let me know she had read my comments. And she said my comments were not in any way relevant to this trial. And I said, oh, Miss Jacobs, I beg to differ with you. And she, she also said, I quote, this is a quote, I barely know Larry Bankston. Okay, well, folks, you can be the judge. I showed you the clip. Does that clip sound like somebody who barely knows Larry Bankston? All right. The reality is the woman knows very, very well Larry Bankston. She knows his past history. She knows the man was convicted of, of a felony for accepting a bribe, no less, as a state senator. And she lied, okay? And I told her, oh, I think it's very relevant. And look, I'm one that doesn't hold. I don't bite my tongue. You should know that by now if you've watched my videos. And I looked her straight in the face. I said, oh, I think it's very relevant because it goes directly to your credibility. And I said, if you will lie as you did there, what else are you willing to lie to the jury about? Okay. And now, needless to say, obviously, that did not set well with Miss Jacobs. And then she followed that up by saying that, and I haven't even read that Inspector General's report. Okay. That we know for a fact because I once tried a case in the LALB and I had her on the witness stand and she readily admitted she never read it, okay? So she didn't read it, we know that. And I said, wait a minute, I wanna make sure I got this straight. I said, you are sitting on a board for which the Inspector General issues a report saying that payroll fraud is going on and you don't feel you have any obligation to even read the report? And she looked at me and she said, no, I don't. And I said, well, then I would submit, ma'am, you have no business being on that board. And that is a fact, folks, okay? But here's the reality. All you gotta do is go to the Board of Ethics and go put in her name and see literally hundreds of thousands of dollars in political contributions. And that's why Governor John Bell Honor Code Edwards yanked Freddie Phillips' membership on that board. Had nothing to do with the prior commitment. She called in her marker, she sent her email to J.P. Morrell, and the governor caved, okay? It's that simple. We got the email to prove it. And now you got somebody who, I, I, you know, I'm Miss Hotshot. I don't need to read a report. She also will always rub, I mean, she just flaunts, I, I'm independently wealthy. I don't need this board's nickels and dimes. Look in the email she sent. I didn't read that off, but here she is saying, as everybody knows, I have a lucrative law practice and I don't need this board's per diem, although she pronounces it per diem. Uh, I don't need per diem. In fact, if you go back and listen to the phone call, if you look at, listen to the phone call between me and her, that's how I can tell you she pronounces it per diem. She's throwing that in my face again. I don't. I never took per diem. Okay, uh, and I would submit. And often, a lot of times, you get what you pay for. Okay, and I think the auctioneer's board is getting what it's paying for in Miss Darley and Jacobs Levy. Okay, I mean this woman. <laughs> This woman is hell on wheels. She is a loose cannon. And God, Governor John Bell Edwards says, you're my, you're my man. Freddie Phillips, get the hell off this board, okay? Of course, he tries to sugarcoat it with an outright lie of, oh, I, I had a prior commitment and somebody had to come off and I chose you. Well, first of all, that's a lie in itself. The, the, it, the, it is a function of public service district. So in putting Miss Jacobs on by default, Freddie Phillips had to go because they are in the same public service district, all right? At any rate, uh, she said she'd never read the report. When, when, when she and I were having this little exchange, her colleague, Al Surratt, who I happen to have gone to college with way back when, he didn't remember me, but I remember him. Uh, he turned and looked and he said, uh, look, I'm having to draft jury instructions. I cannot concentrate with this exchange between the two of y'all. And I looked at him and politely said, I'm not the one who initiated this conversation. She is. And he said, well, the two of you are going to have to take it outside then. All right. Meanwhile, Andrew Blansfield, the defense attorney for state police, just had a huge smile on his face. All right. But at any rate, Miss Jacobs, the very next day, she and I again were at the courtroom. We were out in the hallway waiting for court to convene. And this time we had a quite a bit more pleasant conversation because she had kind of chilled down. Uh, and so she asked me how I thought uh, the trial was going. And I told her from your vantage point, not very well. And she asked me, well, what makes you say that? 
And I said, well, quite frankly, the defense attorney, the expert witness for the defense, I think was devastating for your case. Now, the expert witness <clears throat> had testified to the fact that uh, he said, T Officer Tagliarino, Trooper Tagliarino showed far more restraint than I would or most any other officer would when confronted with this type situation, all right? He also, there was the question, Darlene Jacobs, let me just say this, Darlene Jacobs had asked Tagliarino on the witness stand, uh, she said, why didn't you retreat to your vehicle? And Tagliarino had said, ma'am, that would violate every aspect of training we received for situations like this, all right? And she said, oh, so for you, it was not an option. He didn't even know how to respond to that because it's an asinine question. If they are trained not to retreat to their vehicle, that's everybody, Ms. Jacobs. So it's an asinine question to pose of him. Oh, so for you, it was not an option, all right? Well, when I relayed these points to her about the expert witness and how devastating I thought he was to her chances of prevailing, she said, and I'm quoting now, this is a verbatim quote in an angry tone, she once again her anger riles up again, and she said, and I quote, Robert, he's nothing but a paid whore, unquote. Okay? Now, I want to let you know and then we're going to wrap this video up because I want this to be a two-part, okay? I want to let you know just how utterly horrendous Ms. Jacobs' performance in that courtroom was. And I'm going to demonstrate it very briefly. You saw the video. You saw, and I believe it, you, can go back, you can go back and watch it. It was at about, I think, the 2 minute and 45 second mark. You can clearly hear Trooper Tagliarino call for backup, all right? Well, Ms. Jacobs has Trooper Tagliarino on the stand, and she asked him in a very angry tone, as she did through her bombastic approach to every witness up there. She said, did you at any time call for backup? And he said, yes, ma'am. Well, it's not on the video. And he said, ma'am, it will be on the video. And so she instructed the court to begin advancing the tape on the video. And she paused the tape at a certain point, and she looked at him in a very angry tone, and she said, had you called for backup at that point? And he said, no, ma'am. And she said, advance the tape. And they went a little further. And then she said, pause the tape. And she looked at him and said, had you called for backup at that point? And he said, no, ma'am. He was very polite in her angry, hostile questioning. They advanced the tape again. All right. This time you clearly hear him calling for backup and she lets the tape go on another eight or ten seconds and then she says, freeze the tape. Had you call for backup at that point? Of course, he looked at her with a very puzzled look on his face and he said, well, yes, ma'am. And she said, it's not on the tape. When I told you she had a disastrous performance, I'm here to tell you it was disastrous. Okay. And so... Trooper Tagliarino said, well, can we replay the tape, ma'am, and would it be okay if I just raise my hand at the point at which I call for backup? She said, that'll be fine, replay the tape. So they rewound it and they replayed it, and just as I told you around the two minute and 45 second mark, you can go get the exact second if you want it, you clearly hear him calling for backup. That's why I made a public records request for this tape. Okay, so you can be there, don't take, I don't want anybody taking my version of what happened on this tape, you saw it, okay? And so he raises his hand. By the way, just as an aside, prior to his response, when he said, ma'am, can you replay the tape? And I'll raise my hand at the point that I heard the backup. <laughs> well, let me, they, they advance the tape. He raises his hand. Three other jur three jurors on the front row also raise their hand to signify we just heard him call for backup. Two of the three we're literally laughing. Miss Jacobs couldn't see it, but I sure could. They were literally laughing at this disastrous performance, okay? Now, that's gonna wrap up except for one last little thing, and then we're gonna move, and then we're gonna, I'm gonna come back to you with part two of this episode, but I got just a couple of more things to say. First of all, we're gonna give you a direct link to a document that Miss Jacobs had to agree to with regard to this particular trial. We're gonna give you the document. I'm also, I told you her 
hostility and anti-law enforcement sentiment was so palpable in that courtroom, there is no way anyone in attendance, there's no way the family, no, and, and no way the judge, and certainly no way the jury didn't pick up on it, okay? Uh, and I, we're going to give you a link. She had to agree to this prior to the trial commencing. Hope I can get the whole thing in there. She had to sign off. I've, I have, I'm going to give just a second or two because I want, want it to sink in what I have circled with the pen. Okay, this was signed off prior to the trial. Give just a second to make sure everyone's able to see it, and then I'm going to read it. It says, she will not make any comments in opening statements or closing arguments about her personal opinion, personal experience, or relation to police officers. I don't know what in Ms. Jacobs's background or her dealings with law enforcement. Obviously, they have restricted her from saying it in front of the jury, but her anger and her animosity toward law enforcement was so palpable throughout her entire performance. Only an idiot wouldn't pick up on it, okay? Now, that's going to conclude part one of this series. I'm just going to tell you, and when we get to part two, just as a preface, okay? Now, you can, you can tell, as I've told you, Ms. Jacobs was not happy with me at all, okay? Now, let me just say this as a prelude to part two. Earlier this year, Reverend Freddie Phillips and myself, we formed a brand new auction school. Actually, it's his auction school. In fact, I'm, I'm going to put the website URL on there, and I'm going to make a little plug at this time because I'm very proud of this school, okay? It's the Freddie Phillips School of Auctioneering. You can visit it. We're going to put the website URL on the screen, www.fpauctionschool.com. That's www.fpauctionschool.com, all right? We had to go before the LALB to have this school approved. We did so, or he did so primarily, in March of 2017. Now notice, that's three months before this trial, okay? And of course, Miss Jacobs, you know, seems supportive. She voted for the school. Okay, she voted for the school. We had our first graduate apply for his license at the September 11th, 2017 meeting. Won't you be curious to see Miss Jacobs' disposition? toward Reverend Freddie Phillips at that meeting. Bear in mind the email you've already seen about what she said about him. And of course, when he was bumped off the LALB, she's on, all right? And we've had this trial. I don't, you want my opinion on something? I'm gonna give it to you. If you don't like it, tough. Wait till you see Ms. Jacobs' disposition at that September 11th, 2017, LALB board meeting. I think you're going to be, I don't even know the word to use, but you'll find it intriguing. Thank you so much for tuning in. We look forward to bringing you part two of this incredible series.